uh, our lecture today is about the radiological anatomy of diaphragm and pleura. Starting with the diaphragm, the diaphragm is a C-shaped structure of muscle and fibrous tissue that separate the thoracic cavity from the abdomen. The dome curve upward where superior surface of the dome forming the floor of the thoracic cavity and the inferior surface form the roof of the abdominal cavity. The diaphragm is main muscle of respiration and function in breathing. This is a diagram showing the diaphragm as we see here. This is a, sorry, it's a C shape and uh, this is an inferior view forming the, the surface or the upper uh, or the roof of the abdominal cavity. Okay, the origin of the diaphragm, it has four origin. First, it has the vertebral origin where the two crura, the right and the left cross. Okay, the, this is the right cross uh, where it originates from the body and the disc of L2 and L3 vertebra. And the left, which is the smaller, arise from the L1 and L2 body and disc. Also the, the medial, and this is in this diagram, this is the medial arcuate ligament. Uh, mm. Review option. Review option. ما اعرف يجوز اكو احد منشيره شو ما طالع لي كل شيء اسمه فيو اوبشن اوكي ها هات انيتيت بين اوكي اوكي هس هس فك يلا دكتور ما اعرف يمكن هايلايت ما اعرف اوكي خليها باور لا دكتور شو هاي ما فن اند اولسو uh, body and the disc. Uh, also, the medial arcuate ligament, this is, which is a facial thickening over the psoas muscle, where it originated from the transverse process of L2, uh, sorry, from the body of L2 to the transverse process of L1. And this is the lateral arcuate ligament, where it's a uh, facial thickening over quadratus lumborum muscle and arises from the transverse process of L1 to the 12 rib. Uh, the third one, which this is, sorry, this is the median arcuate ligament, which is a fibrous th a medial thickening of the both crura that uh, behind which pass the aorta. Okay, this is the second part. This is the vertebral. The second part is from the costal cartilage. This, as we see here. The, the diaphragm arises in slips from the lower six costal cartilage. This is the lower six costal cartilage, and we see here the diaphragm arise from. The third part where it arises from the posterior surface of the xiphysternum. This is the xiphysternum, the posterior part arise in uh, two slips from the posterior surface of the xiphysternum. The last one, which is the central tendon. This is the central tendon, the right which is usually, actually, it is not central as it is closer to the sternum and it fused with the pericardium. Okay. Opening in the diaphragm. We have major opening and minor opening. The major opening starting with the cable at the level of T8 where the IVC and right phrenic nerve pass. The second one is the esophagus at T10 or the esophagus, vagal trunk, and branches of left gastric artery, vein, and lymphatic pass, and the aorta at T12, where the aorta, thoracic duct, and a zygous vein pass. The fourth is the behind the medial arcuate ligament, the sympathetic trunk, and behind the lateral arcuate ligament, where subcostal nerve and vessel, and between sternum and costal origin, where superior the gastric vessel. This diagram demonstrates what I mentioned. Uh, first, this is the cable, IVC, and this is the, uh, the, the right phrenic nerve, which pairs the diaphragm at level of T8. The second one, this is the, uh, the esophagus, as we said, with the vagal trunk and uh, branches from the left gastric uh, vessel pass with the esophagus at level of T10. And this is the aorta, 
with the azygous vein, and this is the thoracic duct, which pass at the level of T12. But uh, the aorta usually pass behind the median arcuate ligament and not a true piercing through the diaphragm. Okay, uh, this is where we see it behind the medial arcuate ligament, the sympathetic chain pass, and behind the lateral uh, uh, arcuate ligament where the subcostal artery vein and nerve pass. The last one we mentioned here, the superior epigastric vessels, where we see it pass between the sternal and the costal origins. The minor opening, including the central tendon, where it's pierced by branches, terminal branches of left phrenic nerve, and each cross pierced by greater, lesser least splenic nerve, and posterior diaphragm, where it's lymphatic vessel between abdomen and thoracic pass. This diagram here, see the, as we see here, this is the greater and lesser least uh, splenic nerve piercing the, this is the left cross and this is the right cross pierced by these nerves. And this is the uh, central tendon pierced by the left phrenic nerve. And here posteriorly should be pierced by the lymphatic vessel from thoracic and abdomen. Not so clear in this picture. Okay, uh, I'm well, well. Okay, okay. Uh, blood supply to the diaphragm. The blood supply to the diaphragm is from two origins, from the pericardiophrenic, uh, which is and the musculophrenic artery, which has branches from internal thoracic artery. This is the internal thoracic artery, and this is the pericardiophrenic, the left pericardiophrenic, and this is the right pericardiophrenic. This is the right pericardiophrenic. This is the left pericardiophrenic, which supply the diaphragm and pericardium. The second is the superior and inferior phrenic artery. This is the inferior phrenic artery, which is a branch from the aorta. This is the aorta, as we see, and this is the, the lower phrenic, inferior phrenic artery supplying the diaphragm. Uh, the nerve supply to the diaphragm is uh, from, uh, we have motor and sensory supply. The motor supply is from the phrenic nerve, right and left phrenic nerve. This is the left phrenic nerve. This is the right phrenic nerve, which arises from the uh, uh, anterior root of C3, 4, 5. As we see here, this supply, the motor supply to the diaphragm, while the sensory supply, depending on the part of the diaphragm, from the central, the central tendon, the sensory impulses uh, ascend with the phrenic nerve, while impulses from the peripheral diaphragm ascend with intercostal and subcostal. Moving to the radiology of the diaphragm, starting with the PA chest X-ray, as we see here, this is the right hemidiaphragm, the left hemidiaphragm. The right dome is usually two cm higher than the left, and the left may be higher than the right in some normal pe 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 people, uh, when especially when swallowed gas in colon. Uh, the highest point of the right, this is the right hemidiaphragm, should be at the sixth uh, anterior intercostal space, arranging from four to seven. Uh, as we see here, this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seven. This is the, at the seven, and it ranges from fourth to seven. Okay. This is another picture demonstrating this is the right hemidiaphragm, this is the left hemidiaphragm. Usually the right hemidiaphragm is higher than the left because the heaviness of the heart compressed on the left hemidiaphragm, uh, so it's become uh, uh, lower than the right hemidiaphragm. Uh, the diaphragm level is moved with uh, respiration and with posture. First with respiration, as we see here, during expiration it ascend, and during inspiration it uh, depress. And this change usually depending on the uh, level of respiration. If it is a quiet respiration, then the change uh, will be about 1 cm. While if the respiration is very deep, uh, then the change will reach to up to 4 cm. Okay, uh, that's mentioned with respiration. When moving to change with posture, as we mentioned, so in erect, uh, uh, in erect chest x-ray, the diaphragm will be of uh, lower than if in patient with supine, 
position. If we count here, this is the posterior ribs, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven. While we uh, see here, this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten. Reach to the ten, depending on the gravity. And uh, uh, the second position is the, the decubitus, as we see here. Uh, it will be higher on the dependent position. You see here, this is higher than that part. Okay. Uh, in this patient, uh, in, in dextrocardia, uh, the right hemidiaphragm will be lower than the left hemidiaphragm. We mentioned that in normal people, the left hemidiaphragm is usually lower than the right because the heaviness of the heart lie on the left hemidiaphragm. While in dextrocardia patient, vice versa, because the heaviness of the heart will lie on the right hemidiaphragm. So the patient, it, it, these patients will have the left hemidiaphragm usually higher than the right hemidiaphragm. Moving to lateral chest x-ray. How we differentiate the uh, right and left dome? We have, uh, uh, first we mentioned that the right dome, as we see here, higher, than the left dome. Uh, also, the heart shadow obliterate part of the left dome. As we see here, this is the right hemidiaphragm. This is the left reach here where the height obliterates is. So it, it's uh, end not so clear. The, uh, the, the IBC pairs the right, the right hemidiaphragm. This is the, right, the IBC, but it's usually not so clear on the x ray, but mentioned. This is the IVC, should reach. This is the right hemidiaphragm, so it is pierced by it. The third thing is the gastric bubble. This is the gastric bubble, usually lie below the left hemidiaphragm. So this is the left hemidiaphragm. So first, the right is higher than the left. The gastric bubble below the left, the IVC pierces the right hemidiaphragm, and the heart obliterates the end of the left hemidiaphragm. Moving to how to identify the thickness of the uh, of the diaphragm. Usually it's measured when there is air in the peritoneum. In this picture, this is there is air under diaphragm as we see here. So measuring the thickness of the diaphragm uh, with the pleura and peritoneum reached to two millim, two to three millim, as we see here. This is the right hemi diaphragm measured with the pleura and peritoneum two millim. While with the pleura and fundal wall of stomach reached to five to eight millim, as here, this is a, this is the pleura from the pleura reaching to the fundal. This is the gas of the stomach. So this is the end of the fundus. As we see here, it is longer, reached to six millim. The second investigation is ultrasound. We all examined patients and we all uh, saw the, uh, the diaphragm on ultrasound as an echogenic line covering the surface of liver or spleen and measure to about uh, 2.2 uh, 2 to 2.8 millim in thickness. This is the diaphragm. This is the liver and this is the length. Okay. This is on the B mode. The M mode use it to, 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 to see the function of the diaphragm. As we see here, <clears throat> this wave show the inhalation and exhalation. This is in exhalation and this is in inhalation. Normal patients, we see this diagram, while in patient with a phrenic nerve palsy, this will be lost. So we use the AMU to, uh, to help us in patient with a phrenic nerve palsy. Also in patient with the diaphragm interdigitating or muscular bundle, this may give us a wrong impression of hepatic mass on the liver as we see here. Okay, here this is. Uh, di diaphragm interdigitating look like a mass. So we put it in our consideration and differential diagnosis could be a diaphragm interdigitating. Okay. The third investigation is CT scan. Usually the diaphragm is not seen as a discrete structure from the liver or other abdominal organ, unless there is a lot of fat on its abdominal aspect. This is a CT scan of the abdomen, as we said. Uh, okay, this is the right cross of the diaphragm. This is the left cross of the diaphragm. When we reach here, it cannot be uh, uh, differentiated from the liver 
or differentiated from discipline as a discrete. Only the cross is obvious. Okay, this is another. This is a fat, so that this is the, the right hemidiaphragm. Is it clear here? Because there is a fat behind the liver. This is a right hemidiaphragm. This is the right cross. This is the left cross of the diaphragm. Okay. In uh, the crura are usually visible on the interior surface of the lumbar vertebra. This is the crura usually, this is the lumbar vertebra, and this are the crura. In young muscular subjects, crura may be thickened or even nodular, as in this picture. The crura is nodular and thickened, and sometimes be mistaken as lymphadenopathy. So how to differentiate it? Differentiated by movement with respiration, as we said that the diaphragm move with respiration. So if it is move, it is the crura of the diaphragm. If it is not, so it is a lymphadenopathy. Moving to the retrocrural space, as we mentioned, we said that the aorta pass be behind the two crura or median arcuate lig ligament, this median arcuate ligament, and this is the right cross, left cross, behind it containing the aorta. This is a zygous vein, hemiazygous vein, a thoracic duct. And this is space and also containing fat, and this is space should be not more than six million. This is another picture. Uh, this is the vertebra, body of the vertebra. This is the aorta, celiac artery, right cross, left cross. This is the right hemidiaphragm. This is the left hemidiaphragm, liver, spleen. This is the stomach with the, its rogi. This is the stomach. This is the portal vein. Okay. This is the IVC. These are the kidneys. This is another picture of coronal section. This blue line representing the right hemidiaphragm, and this represents the left hemidiaphragm. This is the left cross, and this is the right cross of the diaphragm. Okay, the la uh, sorry, depending visceral sign. What is the depending visceral sign? Uh, usually in a normal CT scan, the, the diaphragm separates the abdominal organ from the posterior abdominal wall. In patients with diaphragmatic rupture, the posterior abdominal organs, usually the fundus of the stomach or liver, will, will lie in direct contact with the posterior abdominal wall, as in this picture. This is the fundus of the stomach, as we see here, in direct contact with the posterior abdominal wall. The last investigation is the MRI of the abdomen. The diaphragm appears as an, uh, a thin, muscular septum of intermediate signal intensity. And this is uh, the sagittal section. As we see, this is the anterior end of the diaphragm. This is the dome of the diaphragm. This is the posterior diaphragm, which is look like an intermediate, uh, intermediate uh, signal intensity. This is an axial section of the MRI showing uh, the, this is the body of the vertebra. This is the spinal cord. This is the right cross of diaphragm, left cross. This is the aorta, this is the IVC, this is the lamina, uh, sorry, the pedicle, and this is the lamina. This is also another coronal section showing this is the right cross, this is the left cross, and this is the Any question to here as we end with the diaphragm? Before. Pleura is a thin serous membrane consists of two parts, a parietal part, this is the parietal part that is uh, lying the thoracic cavity and mediastinum. This is lying the mediastinum. And the visceral pleura, which cover the lung, as we see here, it's covering the lung. Both layers are continuous with each other at anterior and posterior lung root. The visceral pleura extends to fissures, while the parietal pleura extends deeply to costophrenic and costomediastinum. This is the costophrenic. This is the parietal pleura, as we see, it extends to here. Lower limit of pleura. Uh, we have the visceral pleura and parietal pleura. The, 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 the visceral lower limit of visceral pleura is with the lower limit of the lung. As we said, it's like with a contact, direct contact with the lung. So the lower limit of the lung will represent the lower limit of the visceral pleura. First, anteriorly, as we see in this picture, the lower limit lies with the sixth costal cartilage, as we see here. Uh, this is the lower end of the visceral pleura, while the parietal pleura reach to the eighth or seventh, sorry, seventh costal cartilage. 
This is anterior limb. Posterior limb, as we see here, this is the lower limit of the lung and visceral pleura, reach to T10. While the parietal pleura, this is the parietal pleura, reach to the T12. In the mid axillary line, this is the mid axillary line. This is the uh, this is the visceral pleura. We here to the eighth rib, while the parietal pleura here reaches to the tenth rib. Okay. The pulmonary ligaments. This is the pulmonary ligament is a double serrous sheath that hang down the, below the hilum in a loose fold, may extend to the diaphragm or have a free inferior border and allow the end of the lung root in respiration and also distension of pulmonary vein. This is, as we said, a double layer of visceral pleura. Okay, extending down. The blood supply to the pleura, uh, visceral pleura is supplied by the pulmonary circulation. This is the branch from pulmonary artery, while the parietal pleura supplied from the intercostal artery. Radiological feature of the pleura. First, plain X-ray. Pleura usually is not visible uh, on the X-ray unless, first, if it is tangential to the X-ray beam, uh, depending on the positioning, so. And the second, when there is a fat or air on each side of the pleura as a presence of extra pleural fat. So, uh, well, we see it first in fissures, which, uh, which are uh, lobes, uh, the, the lobes of the lung are separated by pleural fissure, like oblique fissure, horizontal fissure. This is the horizontal fissure. This is the oblique fissure. So it could be seen as here we see. This is a very faint line. This is the transverse fissure. This is the oblique fissure. Okay, because he, here the visceral pleura will be surrounded by air, as we said, surrounded by air or fat. This is another picture. Okay, this is this faint line represent the horizontal fissure. Okay, this is more obvious, but this is in patient with heart failure, so the horizontal fissure filled with fluid, so it become more obvious. The second we said when the parietal pleural lie on extra pleural fat. First, as he see here, just below the second rib or extending vertically from the costophrenic recess. Here, a faint line, very faint line. The, the, uh, the parietal pleura or visceral pleura is see, uh, seen here, extending vertically from the costophrenic recess. This is the costophrenic recess. Okay. The third is junctional line. Uh, the junctional line where the two lines, we say that the two lines lie in contact anteriorly and posteriorly. When the two lines lie in contact with each other, they are separated by four layers of pleura. Uh, these lines are very important because a mass between the line can be excluded if these lines could be seen. Uh, the red line represents the posterior junctional line, and the, red, uh, the blue line represents the anterior junctional line. Here is starting with the anterior junctional line. This is the line, line anterior to the arch of aorta. Okay. This is on CT scan. This is on axial CT scan. This is the anterior junctional line. This is the posterior junctional line, which is extend from the tip of T1 to a variable distance, usually where the lung envelope the aortic arch here and could be may reform in for inferiorly. Over it will uh, obviously seen upper, uh, above the aortic arch. This is on CT scan. This is. Okay, posterior junctional line. This is uh, another picture for the posterior junctional line. Uh, pleura in CT scan. On axial CT, the pleura cannot be distinguished from the thoracic wall or mediastinum unless it, unless it is thickened. Uh, this in this picture, we see that the pleura cannot be distinguished. This, this just faint line picture, but here it is thickened. We, uh, if it is obvious for you, this is this is thickening of the pleura, so this is considered abnormal because it is thickened more than than five mm. Also here it is thickened, so it is abnormal. The pulmonary ligament occasionally be seen extending below the inferior pulmonary vein 
caudally and posteriorly to the diaphragm. Right pulmonary ligament lie close to the IVC, whereas the left pulmonary ligament lie close to the esophagus. So it's not clear here, but the right pulmonary ligament should be close to the IVC here on the right side, and the left should be close to the uh, esophagus. Here uh, we end our presentation. Any question? Thank you very much, Dr. Anur. Do you have any questions on the plural? Yes, Dr. Anur. Uh, number one, right, right diaphragmatic cross. Okay. Right cross of the diaphragm, excellent. Noor Muhammad Jawad, number two. Naam, Ustad, left diaphragmatic cross. Left cross of the diaphragm. Chun al fahas wa bahad. Had axial T1 MRI. Axial T1 MRI, excellent. نروح على أحمد خليل نمبر 3 نعم أستاذ نمبر 3 الآي بي سي إيش هي الآي بي سي نمبر 4 عقيل نعم أستاذ أبدومينال أيورتا نمبر 4 إيش هي الأبدومينال أيورتا نروح على دكتور حيدر كريم نعم استاذ الرقم خمسة فيرتبرا البادي بادي او ذي فيرتبرا واخير واحد لا عندنا العفو العفو نمبر 6 جيزان دكتوره جيزان نعم استاذ سباينال كورد This is the spinal cord دعاء سعد نمبر 7 نعم استاذ بديكال اوف فيرتبرا Medical of the vertebrae. Lastly, Adne Dr. Noor Baba. Naam Ustad. Left lamina of vertebral body. Lamina of the left vertebral body. Okay. And which one? Dr. Noor. Sadam Hamid. Sadam Hamid. Naam Ustad Radia. نمبر وان عمر فهمي نعم استاذ رايت كروس اوف ذا فرا نمبر وان رايت كروس نمبر تو شيماء على نعم استاذ ليفت دايفراماتيك كروس نمبر ثري لارا لارا نعم أستاذ رايت هيمي دايفرام نمبر فور زيد نعم أستاذ الليفت هيمي دايفرام نمبر فايف سالي عبد الرضا نعم أستاذ أي وقت وآخر وحدة سما إبراهيم نعم أستاذ إنفيريور بينا كابا أي بي سي طبعاً 